I'm Laura from Garden Sanity, and in today's video, I'm going to be cleaning up my perennials for the spring and summer seasons. In some cases, it's gonna mean removing the dead growth, like on this calamaris, that I left over the winter to protect the plant. In others, it might just mean cleaning up the leaves. But I'll use several examples, like Cat's Pajamas Cat Mint, Geum, Geranium Roseanne, and others, to show you how easy it is to tidy up your perennials. So let's get started. So luckily in the spring garden, your eyes really drawn to the daffodils. So you don't really notice this guy right here. This is a blue star calamaris. And it's a lot of dead twigs right now, but you can see the new green growth underneath. So it's gonna be a matter of gently pruning away the twigs. And I say gently because you might think you could just pull them out, but you may end up pulling some roots. This may look like an unpruned plant, but if you watched my video last fall where I cut back perennials for the season, I cut these down. They were much larger, but I cut them down to here specifically so that I could save the plant. They're hardy and they're perennials in this area, but I just wanted to be on the safe side and we did get a lot of heavy snows. So what happens is when you have a lot of branches, over a perennial, it does have an added level of protection. I don't think it's anything you know, super beneficial, but I do think it does benefit the plant. There's also some leaves that protect the crown. So that's what we're gonna remove this morning. And I'll show you over here, one that I did yesterday to show you a comparison. So there's the same plant with all of the dead stuff removed. So let me show you how easy this is. So here's how this calamaris looks. And now it nicely matches up with its sibling over here. Believe it or not, this is totally tangerine geum. It's a mess. Look at all the brown leaves that need to come off. They almost blend into the mulch, don't they? But what you also see is the beautiful new green growth. So what we're gonna be doing with this plant is cutting away all the dead stuff to just leave the nice green growth. Now, normally this is evergreen for me, but with all the snow and freezing temps we had this season, that wasn't so much the case. You'll also notice some dead stems there. That's the Verbena bonariensis. And once I uncover all the geum, I'll show you what I'll do with those as well. So here they are, all cleaned up. I found a couple daffodils. <laughs> they were buried underneath a lot of the dead foliage, so that's nice. And you see I'm left with green. So I had to show you this, even though it's kind of gross, but a bird pooped on the plant while I was pruning it. Obviously someone wants me to get a move on. This is a random ornamental onion that I planted years and years and years ago. And I actually found it growing in a different bed last summer, so I just put it here. But with any of your alliums, what's gonna happen, whether you have millennium or, or lavender bubbles, any of those, what you're gonna see after the winter time is you're gonna see a lot of this dead stuff. You can just pull that out with your hands, easy cleanup. The other thing I uncovered was where all of the Verbena bonariensis is. 
I left each of these stems so that I'd know where it is because it tends to start growing from the base a little bit later. And because this was uncovered and wasn't getting sun, I think that's why I can't even show you any of the new growth that's starting to happen at the bottom yet. So what I'm gonna do is cut this back just a little bit, but I'm gonna keep it so I know where the new growth is gonna happen. But I'm gonna show you a different verbena in another garden where the new growth is already happening and I can cut these all the way back. Ah, the daffodils and the beautiful hellebores. And then what the heck is this? Well, this is the other verbena bonariensis I wanted to show you. So in this case, it's been getting a lot of sun and you can see the new green growth. It'll always come from the base. It's never gonna come from these stems, but like I mentioned before, I leave these here so I can remember where they're gonna be. Partly because until you get used to what they look like, you might think they're weeds. So it's a good tip to just leave some stems if you're not sure what the new growth is gonna look like, just so you don't accidentally rip your perennials out. So in this case, I'm gonna cut these all the way down to the ground. So here's what it looks like now and I will go around the garden and do this with any other verbena seedlings that I see growing up. And maybe I'll even see a few new ones sprouting this year. I always love when that happens. So this is what the geranium roseanne looked like last fall. Beautiful red and green colors. And this is what it looks like now. <laughs> it's definitely time to get rid of all this dead stuff but look at the pretty growth already coming through. This is gonna be pretty easy because for the most part I can pull this stuff off. I'll prune a few things if they are a little bit hard to tug. I don't wanna pull out any roots or anything. There we go all ready for it to take off. And before you know it, it's gonna have a huge amount of gorgeous blue flowers that last all summer. Geranium roseanne is a sterile plant, so it never focuses on producing seeds. It just produces flowers nonstop until frost. It's gorgeous. And here is one of the cat's pajamas cat mints that I planted last October it's already got beautiful buds on it. I'm so excited. Now I cut this back a little bit, not much, and you can see some of the twigs, little tiny stems that are still there. I will take my pruners and gently prune those out. In some cases you can just pull and they'll come right out. Again, be careful and do it gently so you don't accidentally pull any roots out. But that's all I'm gonna have to do with these plants. Easy. I cannot wait to see these flowers. They always say that the cat's pajamas catmint, when you plant it, that it's the second year that it's gonna really take off. This will be its second year. So I cannot wait. And there's a couple I forgot. So we'll get that guy, and we'll get that guy, and that guy. Oh, and back there. <laughs> there we go. Now it is perfect. This is Veronica Royal Candles. It has beautiful deep blue flower spikes in the summer. And as you can see, last fall, I left, I cut it down, but I left some stems. Again, so I know where it was. And now I'm gonna cut those stems off because no growth comes from those stems. It's all gonna come from the base, as you can see. And this is Veronica Pink something or other. <laughs> I'll put the name on the screen. This growth is a little different from Royal Candles, as you can see. It again comes from the base but it's not as bushy as the Royal Candles. It is a different variety. So again, I'll cut those stems down now that I see the new growth coming up. So while these Red Devon Daffodils are blooming, Veronica Royal Candles just takes its time getting bushy and then pretty soon that can mask the growth that's still left over from the daffodils when they're all done. And on the other side of the Red Devons is this other Veronica. Again, I know it's pink, <laughs> but here I can get down a little bit closer and show you that there is new growth coming up. It almost looked like the middle was empty, but there is new growth coming up there too. So hopefully this will come back nice and bushy as well. I love both of these plants. I definitely want to plant more Veronica. 
This is what's left of my Sedum Autumn Fire. I did leave it all winter. I like the way the winter interest looked. And I actually like the way the stems turned really white. And against the new growth, look how beautiful the new growth is already. It looks really pretty. And when these tete a were in bloom, it was a really, really nice combination. So for this, all I have to do is take the stems out because as you can see, the new growth is already kicked in. And now here's how it looks. I did accidentally, I'm keeping it real, I did accidentally cut off part of the plant. <laughs> I felt really bad. But as you can see, it's gonna be nice and bushy. It'll be like this all season and then the flowers start to come up midsummer, but they really don't take on their gorgeous color until late summer into fall. It's a beautiful plant. And you can see behind it, more blue star calamaris that I've got to cut off all the dead stuff. You can see the new growth underneath. So this is pretty to see the orange rocket barberry starting its new growth, which is beautiful. And then you step back and what you see are the remains of the tete-a-tete -tete daffodils, which are the early blooming daffodils and they're done. But what you also see is behind it, beautiful sedum autumn fire. And so just like I did the other one, I will cut these stems down and then it'll be a nice, beautiful, bushy plant. So that's all that's needed with the sedum autumn fire. It's gonna be a beautiful green plant through the spring and most of the summer until the flower stalks start showing up. And once the tete-a-tete -tete leaves die away, I wait six weeks all the time and then I remove the leaves. There'll still be a beautiful plant here. Now I do wanna talk about candy tuft also a perennial, it's an evergreen perennial that I absolutely love. As you can see, springtime is its prime time. So you're not gonna wanna cut anything of this back until it's done blooming. So I'll show you that in a couple of months. Once it's done blooming, it starts forming some seed heads. I usually cut it all back, but I'll leave a few seed heads just to drop and keep it nice and bushy and keep it going. But it's a gorgeous plant. So here is the Russian sage all pruned up. I removed any of the stems that didn't have new growth on them. That meant they were dead. And even the ones that did have growth, you'll notice I trimmed those back a little bit too. I want this to be more bushy. Last year was the first year I planted it and it was a little bit lanky. So I want this to be more bushy. So I may come out a few times and do that this year, we'll see. So I hope I've shown you how easy it is to tidy up your perennials for the spring and summer season. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And check out my pruning video playlist. I have all kinds of videos on there, including one for this limelight hydrangea tree that I just pruned back yesterday for the season. And until next time, happy gardening.